Hi, this is Bruce with Hunsaker Home Hacks. Today I want to talk to you about my Lin C camera, the video camera that I'm currently recording on. This camera is the one I opened up and unboxed about two, two and a half weeks ago. And I wanted to make a video right away just to show that I got a new camera because I was excited because I have a 1080p camera as opposed to my original camera, which is right here recording the back of my head. Reason why I want to talk about this, I've been working with this camera now for a few weeks and I thought it would be good to give more of an in-depth review of what I think about this camera. So we're going to start with a few things. All right, so let's talk about the picture quality. The picture quality of this camera is good. I like it. 1080p, it's crisp, it's clear. The color degradation is really good. You can see from my shirt, this is a nice bright construction orange and I'm wearing a black hat. Along in the background, you can see that there's a lot of blues and reds behind me. So that should give you some idea of how the color looks in this camera. So as for the picture, it's crisp, it's clear, it's very good. So let's talk about the sound. The sound now, well, the sound I've had a few issues with. First off, some of his user error. Using the boom cam the boom microphone, which is this microphone right here. Um, using that microphone, it comes with its own separate on and off switch. So if you're a dork like me, sometimes you record something without turning on the microphone. And that's kind of a bummer. The second issue comes from when you're trying to charge the camera and use the camera there is some huge feedback from the electrical current going into the camera to charge it so being able to charge the camera while you use the camera you can't do it so that's kind of a bummer but if you charge up the battery prior to use that works just fine this camera here you could charge and use all the time what a difference a day makes right Let's talk about how the camera operates. You have a remote control, a remote control right there. This remote control, it's pretty awesome. You can start and stop your recording right here with this button. You can also zoom with this button or make it wide with this button. When the camera is not in record mode, you can actually control the modes of the camera right here. You can also review your videos and you can delete videos via the remote control. And that's all pretty cool. The only con about the remote control is it is a line of sight remote control. In other words, it's an IR remote control. And being an IR remote control, that means you actually have to hit the line of sight on the camera of where the um, where the IR reads and the IR lives apparently and I'll refer to this camera right here apparently the IR lives right in the LCD the LED light area so there you have it also the LED lights now, I'm going to try to test them out for you. The LED lights, I'm about an arm's length away, so I will turn on the LED lights. As you can see, there's a slight increase in the light in my face right here. And if I turn it off, you can see that it went away. So there it is on. And there it is off. Very subtle on arm's length away. If I do it when I'm not in the frame, we'll let the other camera pick it up. There it is, it's hitting it. Now it's off. So, how is this useful? Well, in an instance such as this, where I'm closer, I'm about a foot and a half away now, it does add a little bit more and removes the shadow from your face, but it's definitely prominent and you can see it. So for ease of use of that, 
eh, it's okay. Camera in the hand, the camera in the hand feels real good. The buttons here are very easy to control. You can zoom and you can start and stop recording. So that's awesome too. Uh, I, it feels good in the hand. Um, the only button that's a little bit rough is if you're not using a remote, then you're gonna be using your finger to turn the camera on and off. That happens by two different things. One is you can close the LED, the LCD screen right here, or you can hit the button on the inside of the camera. That button, if you hold it, will turn the camera off. If you tap it, it will turn on the LED light. Recording in 720, not a problem. The frame rate is awesome. Recording in 1080, the camera is at 30 frames per second. So that's cool. Um, it makes for editing really neat. Um, and if you're recording 720, you still get a nice crisp picture, but, um, and you get an extensive frame rate. All right, SD cards. In order for this camera to work properly, you need a class 10 SD card. It will not work for any lower class than class 10. So you need to use a class 10 SD card. That's not too bad. I bought my 32 gig for under $20. So total investment so far for this camera with one SD card and the camera itself, $130 delivered to my front door. So that's pretty awesome. The other thing I've noticed about this camera is battery life. This camera has a decent battery life overall, but you're not going to get a day at Disney World. Uh, with start and stop, you could probably get a couple hours out of it. But for continually recording, um, you're going to need a second battery if you're going to do something that's going to be of long time lapse. So I'm going to look up a battery for you and I'll put it in the links. But that's really not too much of an issue because if the batteries are cheap enough, why not? I mean, the whole camera is $110. Um, overall, I like the camera. I was looking to improve video quality and I achieved that with this camera so for video quality of this camera I give it a thumbs up for sound quality I was looking to improve sound quality now this microphone the boom microphone is way better than the internal microphone on the camera the internal microphone on the camera it's a wide field of sound but it's lacking overall i did use it to record a video if you watch the pool video you'll see the sound that i used that video was done by the internal uh microphone which the internal microphone is located right about here on the camera um it's not bad but it's not great so so for sound quality with the eternal microphone, it's not great. I'll give that a thumbs down for the internal microphone. For the boom microphone. Now, the boom microphone has two ranges, of two settings, 120 degrees and 90 degrees. That would mean that the sound that it's picking up is more coned in the 90 and the 120 is a little bit broader, which currently I'm recording on 120. Um, it also has some noise canceling features, which then if you're in line of sight of the camera and you're talking to the camera directly, then it's going to pick up your voice better than if you're moving your head or you're moving side to side or you're moving the sound, the microphone around back and forth. So overall, it did improve because of the noise cancellation, um, but I had a lot of user error Overall, I'm going to give the external microphone a nice sidebar squiggly because I think it could be better. It could be better if it somehow turned on and off with the camera so you wouldn't have to waste the battery because it does have an external battery to the microphone and that is not a rechargeable battery so you'll have to buy the battery each time. Overall, what do I think about this camera? Picture quality is a thumbs up. Sound quality is a squiggly. 
sound quality of the internal microphone not worth it if you get it without the boom mic it's pretty bad um battery life squiggly if you're looking for a way to make get better picture quality for the least amount of money and try to improve video quality this camera is a thumbs up for the price because for $110 total investment with SD card 130 you you can't get a better deal than that it's and I couldn't put a boom microphone on a camera for as much as I paid for this microphone and camera set so I'm gonna say thank you very much for watching the video please like and subscribe and ring the bell for future notifications and I will see you soon Yep, that's right.